Little bit more water. Now I'm not using a lot. Don't use too much. We're going to pull again. This time squeezing in. I'm squeezing in with my fingers over here. And I am now going to actually start making an angle on the outside also to match the inside. Not too much. The trick is don't open it up too much. Now, the inside of the pot, this part right here, if this isn't beautiful, you don't have a beautiful pot. So I keep looking at this inside and I keep going back and forth. Now watch me, I'm going to hold my hand. I'm going to go into the pot and press out any lines. I don't want any lines in the opening and come to the center. I'm going to go from the center back up, climb up the wall of the pot. Okay, I'll do that one more time. Come down the wall of the pot, gently compress the floor into the center, and gently lift off. I don't, I've taken away any lines over here. It's a nice swoop. Since I teach throwing so much through mental concepts, is that think of yourself, if you were inside a balloon, you've blown up the balloon, but you're on the inside. The inside of the balloon is all nice and round, and you're in there. That's what I want you to think of. The inside of the piece, not the outside. And how to make that inside so it goes from one side to the bottom to the other side without any interruption of flow. It must go straight, continue on without any lines interrupting. If you have lines, you don't have a beautiful bowl. We're going to open this bowl up further. A little bit more water on the outside. Now press the fingers to each other. Come up the side of the pot slowly. Notice how slow my wheel is. All right, I'm starting to open up this nice, beautiful V. Compress the rim. I'm starting to look at my V on the outside. It's similar to V on the inside. So again, I'm going to take my sponge and spend some time on the interior of my pot going back and forth so I have no interruption or line. This is where I use a rib. I love ribs. Um, they, uh, for me, they take away the throwing lines because I like the way my glazes work on a flat surface. And also if you're into uh, decorating, you want a flat surface so you can decorate. Or using stamps or doing um, carving, you need a flat surface. So in those times, you want to take away a lot of your throwing walls. So a, a rib helps compress the wall so it gets stronger, drier, and tighter. So a rib is a great thing. I use a rib on my outside hand and a sponge on the inside hand. And I just follow up the piece, touching sponge to edge of rib and slowly come up the form and then when I get to the top release it and then move it away. Just put a little bit of water and compress my rib, rim here. It is so important to get a beautiful rim here. I am now going to use this rib. I love these flexible ribs. They come in all different kinds of flexibility. I like this kind of a firm yet flexible one. It helps me get rid of the throwing marks so I'm going to Notice I'm only using one hand because my bowl is just about being made. It has a lot of structure to it and I can come up the walls of the pot very gently and I'll do it again, this time holding support and I'm getting a nice beautiful bowl and I'm also opening it up a little wider. Now I have one more thing I'm going to do and I have to get a chamois. I compress the rim and I take a nice flex flexible piece of leather, a chamois, and round my rim. I'm so demanding of beautiful round rims and I roll it. And then you have a beautiful round rim. I want to go just a little bit more extreme just because I want to. And I'm going to just shape this off so that it flanges out a little bit more. Just for fun. So I hope you enjoyed your first bowl and we will now do another exercise later on. Have fun throwing bowls.